Today I'm building a NAS as a complete beginner. I've been told that if you deal with large amounts of data, such as videos or family photos, this is a proper way to store them. Since I'm new to NAS, Ugreen sent me their most beginner friendly NAS to try. Hit the like button and let's see if it's worth it. The NAS came in this box, this is a model DXP4800+, Plus. you can see packaging is on premium level here, inside we have an accessories box where you have 2 year warranty card and a manual. Next we have a power cord with an adapter, which is a barrel jack with 150 watts output. Then we have some kind of metal pry tool, 2 of these, a pair of thick thermal pads, 2 ethernet cables, they are pretty good quality, even have caps. And we also get a Philips head screwdriver with spare screws. Here's the star of today's video than as itself. First impression, it has some weight to it, the case here is metal. On the back side we have a magnetic dust filter, under which we have a fan that will cool our hard drives. Overall, it feels solid and has rubber legs for stability. Let's check what we have on the front. You can see it has 4 drive trays, you can press on the bottom, it will unlock and you can slide it out. The hard drive goes in the tray and it will connect to the interface back there when you slide it back. Pretty nice. On the front we also have a power button, indication, SD card reader, Type-C and a USB 3.2. Moving to the back we have an HDMI, another USB, two LAN ports, one for 2.5 gigabits per second and another for 10 gigabits per second, a reset hole and a DC power port. On the bottom NAS have a removable panel which is held by two screws and inside we have two Gen 4 M.2 slots and two RAM slots. NAS comes with a 8 gigabytes DDR5 stick from the box and the second slot is ready for an upgrade. So here's everything we get from the box. From the manual I learned that the metal pry tool is actually a tray key. Once you install the hard drive you can lock the bottom preventing the tray from unclipping. And the thermal pads are for the M.2 SSDs. You can stick them to the M.2 removing the plastic first of course and it will dissipate heat to the metal case. That's nice. Let's move to the hard drives. I got 4 Western Digital Red plus NAS drives, each 4 terabytes. Ugreen has a list for compatibility to check. If you are a first time builder like me, it's better to fill all trays from the beginning. That can be pretty pricey, so Ugreen also has a 2 bay NAS, which is more budget and beginner friendly pick. Installing the drive is very easy, we don't need any of the screws, just press on the side and pull to extend. Place your hard drive and lock the plastic back, very cool design. Then and just align and gently slide it back into the NAS. At the end you'll feel it's connecting to the interface and the tray closes as well. All 4 drives are installed, the only thing left is to lock the trays with the key. Now let's go to the setup. First let's connect the power cord and turn on the NAS. It started just fine, the lights on the front are working and you'll hear the discs powering up. So now to make our NAS, network attached storage, network attached, we need to connect it to the modem. I have a very simple network setup, I use a single modem them and connect everything with Wi-Fi. On the back my modem has LAN ports, one of which I use to connect NAS. The first end goes into the modem and the other into the NAS. Doesn't matter which one, LAN ports on my modem are probably just 1 gigabits per second, so I can't utilize 2.5 or 10 gigabits per second anyway. Now that everything is ready for setup, you can complete it through your phone using the Ugreen NAS app or via PC with a desktop version. Ugreen has a nice beginner's guide with all the steps which are quite simple. You just go to find.ugnas.com and you will see your NAS ready for the setup. From here you just follow through, name the NAS, create an admin, make sure to remember the credentials, it will ask you to create Ugreen Cloud account so you can enable Ugreen Link Remote Access, all these features could be enabled later so you can skip for now if you want. Then update preferences, it will update the NAS and you are done. I then installed the Ugreen NAS app, logged in with the credentials and I am in. It reminds me of VirtualBox or TeamViewer, which is no wonder because this is basically another PC that has a ton of storage. To finish the setup, go to the control panel and check for updates. Mine has an old version and I was getting this network error. I went with the manual update installation and then it was updated to the latest version. Now let's create our storage. Go to storage, create volume, select all four of the drives and the RAID type. You 
you can see that once I select my drives, it recommends a RAID 5 type, which will give me 10.8 terabytes, less than total, but in case one of the drives get damaged, I can recover the data. I can also select RAID 0, which gives me all my storage, but if any of the disks fail, I won't be able to recover my data easily. Next, the assigned total is at the max, and we have a choice of the file system. Both are great, here are the main differences between ext4 and btrfs. I went with the second one because it has good features for content creation and promises more protection. Hit create, it will format all disks and create our volume. It also starts syncing, which can take a while, but we can already use the NAS, nothing extreme though. And the last step, to turn this into a big external drive, you can go to control panel, file service, check enable SMB service and apply. You can see here it has path that you can use in Windows or Mac to access the drive. Go to that path, login, and you can now access your NAS right from the file explorer. That's super cool. You can log in from any other PC that's connected to the same Wi-Fi. More than that, you can add more NAS users. They can log in, access, and manage only their own data. This is super convenient for a workspace setup or just the family members. Let's talk a bit about the specs. The DXP4800 Plus runs on 12th gen Intel Pentium Gold 8505, which is a 5-core 6-thread CPU with 4.4 GHz on performance and 3.3 GHz on efficient course frequency. Around 55 watts TDP, so it's pretty efficient. The NAS itself runs pretty quietly. Our CPU paired with the 8 GB of DDR5 at 4800 MHz frequency, and it also has an integrated graphics, so you can connect monitor to your NAS. Overall, it has enough performance out of the box to run all kinds of NAS tasks, like 4K home theater for example. Let's check the speeds now. Here I have recorded content, let's select 10 GB and transfer it to the NAS. Looks like we are getting 37 MB per second and the transfer was done in 4 minutes 38 seconds. That's a solid result considering everything is done through the Wi-Fi. To increase the speed, I connected my PC to my modem with a second Ethernet cable. I am now getting 112 megabytes per second speed and the time is down to 1 minute 33 seconds, which is slightly better than my external drive. It was done in 1 minute 36 seconds with a bit lower speed. We can also compare it to the cloud storage, but if you don't have a super fast upload speed, it's not much of a competition. I tried transferring 450 megabytes video and it estimated 25 minutes with less than 1 megabytes per second speed. Even if you have a great upload speed, the price difference here is also huge. Huge. If you want several users and 10 terabytes of storage, you're gonna end up paying $100 plus in business subscription fees each month, instead of one-time NAS and hard drives purchase. If you compare NAS to external drives, they are harder to manage and can fail with no data recovery. I've been using NAS for several days now. From the App Center, I got apps that added more features. I got the Photos app, which is so far my favorite. Remember how many times you had trouble transferring media from your phone? With this app, you can go ahead and enable backup. This will transfer all your media to your NAS automatically. It also syncing, so all your new content will be uploaded right away. I'm definitely setting up this for my family. The Photos app also has AI models that you can download, and then any user could use them to sort the media into albums. It does a great job recognizing people, pets, locations, even barcodes and text. There are more cool apps like Online Office, which is great for documents, a music app that you can store all your playlists in, and a theater app to manage movie content. If you enable remote access with Ugreen Link, you'll be able to access your NAS from anywhere with the internet, turning it basically into your own streaming service, with no ads and no fees. I'm still very new to NAS. I'm sharing the features that I'm using from day one. Security wise, there are practices you can use. I would say use a strong password for your Wi Fi and NAS accounts, and you can set up two factor authentication or even a firewall so only trusted devices can connect. All in all, as a beginner, this was pretty user friendly. I like the guides that they have on the website, so if you want to get into NAS, Ugreen DXP series is a great way. Check out the links below to learn more and you get 20% off with my link.